What's up guys, this is Ira for Movements. I'm gonna show you all my live gear today, my pedals, my guitars, and my amp. All right, first pedal in my train is my distortion pedal. It's by a company called J Rocket Audio Designs. Um, I run a really clean amp, so this pedal is on at all times. Uh, I've tried a lot of different distortion pedals, and this one just kind of suited me the best after going through about 10 of them. Um, I really like it. It's not very temperamental. I can change a lot of things with it during the set, um, and it, it's not too gainy, uh, and I, it's great. Uh, next pedal in my chain is the MXR Analog Chorus pedal. Um, I got this pedal like in a trade along with my tuner, and I wasn't really expecting it to like be that good, or re I didn't really know anything about it. But it's been on my board for like three years now, and it's the only chorus pedal that I've really ever used, and I really like it. Um, the levels and the rate can get pretty crazy, but I keep it pretty dialed back, um, and I don't use it very often. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't really tried a lot of chorus pedals, but I really like this one, and, and it's an analog chorus, so it's not digital, which is really nice. Uh, next pedal in my train is uh, the JHS uh, Panther Cub. It is an analog uh, delay pedal. Um, there aren't a lot of analog delay pedals that have a tap tempo on them. There's only about like three or four that I've ever seen, um, and this is one of them. Um, I went with this one because it, uh, it has some really cool features on it. It has a really cool um, ratio knob, which like you can you can set your tap tempo, and then you can do like quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, um, along with the same tempo that you're using. So that's like a really cool effect on it, and it also has like a really cool like uh, ambient kind of uh, almost almost kind of chorus sound, um, maybe with like a little tremolo on it. Um, but I use that a lot in our record. Um, I use this pedal probably the most in, in our record, and you can really hear it. And if you ever hear anything like weird in our record, it's usually this pedal. Um, next pedal in my train is, um, it's by a company called More Audio. It's actually a digital delay, so it's another delay, but it's digital. Um, this, this pedal I actually had before the JHS, and I liked it, but um, it was just, it's pretty trebly, and I wanted something that was a little bassier, even if I, even if I turn down, I turn down like the highs and I turn down up the lows, um, it's still just a little trebly and it and it just doesn't sound as real. But I still really like this pedal and it's a great balance between my analog delay um, and it has some really cool effects on it. You can do like loops with it and reverse and stuff. But I mostly just use it for like feedback and like really crazy sounds. Um, so I don't use it for like your typical delay sound. Uh, next pedal in my board. Um, is uh, the Strymon Flint. Um, this is like another one of my all-time favorite pedals and favorite pedal companies. Um, it's a reverb and a tremolo. Uh, I played through a lot of reverbs and this one is definitely like my favorite. Um, I don't use the tremolo as much as I probably should, but it, it's, I'm starting to use it a little bit more experimenting, but just this, this pedal is just so unique. It sounds so different from any other reverb that I've ever heard. Um, it has a great uh, like decay on it as well, which I really love. And this I have on, I'd say like 80% of the time. Um, if I could have like seven or eight delay, or sorry, seven or eight like reverb pedals on my board, I probably would. Um, but yeah, this one's my favorite by far. Um, and then next to it, I got the classic Holy Grail. Um, this one I use for like leads and very like ambient parts in our set. Um, I don't definitely don't use it as much as, as the Strymon, but it's a fixture in my, my board and I'll probably never get rid of it. This is my amp. Um, it's a 65 Twin Reverb uh, by Fender. Um, I, use, I usually use a 68, but uh, we, we actually recently bought a 65 as well, so kind of switch back and forth sometimes. Um, they, they sound pretty similar. They're a little different. This one's, um, I'd say, a little bit uh, more has more of a clean sound to it. It has a little bit more clarity to it. Um, my whole theory behind using like a Fender Twin is that I want like my bass tone to be like as clean as possible, and then I want to use like all my pedals to enhance that sound. So it's kind of like you have like a clean slate, and um, you're able to like make that tone however you want with still having that clarity. And it literally does exactly that. Um, I've locked in my tones for it, um, and. Twin reverbs are a little twangy sometimes, so 
I, I kick my bass up pretty high, I have it at like six or seven. Um, the mids are at five and treble's at like five or six. So it's all pretty even across the board, but um, I love this amp. Another thing I really love about this amp is that you can turn up and down your volume and it doesn't affect your tone. And I find with a lot of other amps that that's a huge issue that I have um, at venues and stuff like that when people want me to like turn down my amp and I'm like, oh, it's gonna affect my tone. and. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Like I can turn this down to two, and it sounds the exact same as if it were at like seven. So um, yeah, it's definitely like my dream amp, and like I'm so stoked that I have it. I'm using three guitars in our live set right now. First guitar I'm using is Fender Duo Sonic. Uh, I didn't really know much about this guitar when I picked it out, uh, but it is uh, two single coil pickups, and it's has a smaller fretboard length, and it's really light, which I didn't know when I first got it, but it sounds great out of my Fender Twin. Um, I use this guitar um, for like a really low tuning with D standard, and I didn't think it would sound that great being such a tiny guitar and being with such a low tuning, but it actually sounds great, and I'm super stoked. Like the single coils are awesome, and it's like a really cheap guitar that sounds like, like it's expensive, which is really cool, and it's orange, which is like the best part. Uh, next guitar I've got in my arsenal is sorry, something's going on here. There we go. All right, it's a Fender Jazzmaster. It's the classic player. Um, I did have the American Professional before this, and um, I did a lot of research, and I decided to make a change over to the classic player. Um, it just sounds better. Um, it's just more of a classic jazz master sound to it, um, and yeah, and it's it's sunburst. I don't know. I, just, I really like this guitar. It's cool. It's just part of my arsenal now. I just kind of just got it, so I'm still trying to get used to it. Uh, and my last guitar, but definitely not least, is. It's a Telecaster. It's made by a company called Thirteen Street Guitars. Um, their company is called Clockwork. Um, it's just a mom and pop shop uh, near my house in Huntington Beach, California. A uh, really cool thing about this guitar is I was able to customize every aspect of it, um, going down to like what kind of wood I use for my fretboard, which I picked Bird's Eye Maple. I was able to do the, the double white binding on the body of it, which I don't really see a lot on tellies. Um, was able to customize the pickups that I wanted um, and just everything about it. The no inlays on the neck. I have them up top though, so it looks kind of cool, you know. Like, when I'm playing, people are like, oh, what is he playing? Or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is my baby. Like, I use this for a lot of the record that, that we did, um, and it's super versatile. And yeah, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this guitar. <laughs> Um, it sounds so, so unique, and I'm like so happy with it, and I've had it for almost four years now. Hey guys, that was my gear. Thanks for walking through it with me. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.